recently changed from a 280mm all-in-one liquid cooler to a Hyper 212 Black Edition air cooler. As a result of this, I have decided to undervolt my 13600K one last time. In the BIOS, I have set 5.2GHz for the P cores, 4.1GHz for the E cores, and 4.6GHz for the ring. This is a 100MHz increase for the P cores and the ring, and a 200MHz increase for the E cores, compared to stock. Other BIOS changes I have made are to the DDR4 RAM and the voltages. For the DDR4 RAM, I overclocked it from 3600 up to 4000, and tuned most of the timings. To get the RAM overclocked, I followed an online guide, which included instructions for many different types of DDR4 RAM, including Micron BDI, which I am using. For the undervolt, I am running a minus 40 millivolt offset on each of the cores, and a minus 20 millivolt offset on the system agent as that is what my system requires to be stable with DDR4-4000. In order to get the DDR4-4000 stable, I also needed to increase the DRAM voltages up to 1.42 volts. My goal is to get higher than stock performance out of my CPU while using less than stock power. I will show some results comparing my CPU overclock with tuned DDR4-4000 memory versus my CPU at stock with XMP. Compared to stock, the undervolted overclock represents a 2-5% increase in clocks for the cores and an 11% increase in memory speed while dropping the core voltages by 40 millivolts. In Cinebench 2024 at stock with XMP, the CPU scores 1331 points in the multi-threaded test. The power usage is 153 watts with the cores fully loaded. With my air-cooled undervolt, which includes an overclock on both the CPU and the RAM, I ended up scoring 1435 points. This is an almost 8% increase in score, and the power draw of the CPU was reduced to 147 watts. With the undervolted overclock, we not only improved the score, but we also dropped power a little bit. Both things combined to improve the overall efficiency of the CPU. I think that Rapid Delight got a bad rap for its power consumption, Later BIOS versions from various manufacturers seem to have reduced the power figures dramatically over time. We can see this in data from Tech Power Up, for instance. Look at the power used in Blender for the 13600K launch review back in October of 2022. In this review, the 13600K is using 187 watts in the multi-threaded test, and the 13700K is using a whopping 252 watts in this test. Fast forward to a more recent review, and we see very different power figures. This shot is from the 9950X review. Here we see the 13600K is using only 139 watts, and the 13700K has reduced its power down to 212 watts. The 13600K in the launch review was using an extra 35% in power consumption, and the 13700K was using an extra 19% in power consumption in its launch review. I posted a while ago about a newer BIOS, which basically undervolted my 13600K with BIOS defaults. It seems that for many BIOSes, several Raptor Lake CPUs have reduced in power over time. I am surprised this wasn't talked about more, since the high perceived power draw was one of the only negatives talked about in many of the reviews for Raptor Lake when the CPUs launched back in 2022. The 13600K is still a powerhouse when it comes to multi-thread performance for the price. Take a look at the 9700X review from Tech Power Up. In Cinebench 2024, the 13600K at stock is scoring 1322 points, a similar score to the more expensive and much newer R7 9700X when overclocked with PBO. Comparing with the stock 9700X, the 13600K is over 100 points ahead. If you compare my air-cooled overclocking result for the 13600K versus the 9700X PBO result, my 13600K wins by over 100 points. It's pretty impressive that a two-year-old Core i5 is putting up better results in several scenarios than the 9700X, which just launched a few months ago. There is also a very good chance that my 13600K is using less power in this test, while scoring higher than the 9700X PBO. 
since when you turn PBO on, the multi-thread energy efficiency goes out of the window for certain Ryzen CPUs. Tech Power Up showed that the 9700X with PBO enabled uses an extra 90 watts in their multi-thread power test versus the 9700X at stock, bringing the multi-core test up to 170 watts for that CPU, which is quite a bit more than I've seen in any multi-core test on my overclocked and undervolted 13600K. For the gaming results, I will be comparing my undervolted overclock to the 13600K at stock with XMP enabled. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p low with the CPU at stock and using the performance profile with DDR4 3600XMP enabled, the average FPS was 256. After applying my efficient air-cooled overclock with the P cores at 5.2 GHz, E cores at 4.1 GHz, and the ring at 4.6 GHz, along with my DDR4 4000 tune settings, the average FPS increases to 289. This is an almost 13% increase over stock. You might be wondering, the clocks only increased by around 2% versus stock plus XMP. How did you get almost a 13% increase in performance? The answer as I found in my prior video lies in the RAM overclock. My DDR4 4000 is clocked 11% higher and the timings are even tighter than the XMP profile. In a prior video, I found that, in this benchmark, overclocking the CPU alone barely moves the result at all. But the RAM overclock makes a huge difference. This is a great result, and what makes this result even better is that it is using slightly less power than the stock results, since I am undervolted by 40 millivolts on the cores. In Guardians of the Galaxy, at 1080p lowest, with the CPU at stock and using the performance profile with XMP enabled, the average FPS was 185. After applying my efficient air-cooled overclock, along with my DDR4 4000 tune settings, the average FPS increases to 210. This time the increase is over 13% compared with stock. And again, most of the performance gains come from the overclocked DDR4 4000 RAM. In these two gaming benchmark results, we see around a 13% increase by going from stock with XMP to my air-cold, undervolted overclock. The 13600K seems to mostly be unaffected by the VMIN shift instability issue. By default, the 13600K runs at relatively low voltages compared to some of the other Raptor Lake K-series CPUs. I have seen zero signs of this issue on my machine, even after overclocking, as I always made sure to check that voltages were running at safe levels. The 13600K also seems to use a bit less power today when using an updated BIOS compared to when it originally launched. In the end, it is nice that it is possible to get a mild overclock on the 13600K, even with a $30 air cooler like the Hyper 212 Black Edition. Efficiency is something that has always been important to me, and with a more limited air cooler, I am compelled to use this more energy efficient overclock which improves clocks over stock and even drops power usage by a small amount. Even though the core overclock shown in this video is quite mild, you can still see some massive performance improvements in various apps thanks to DDR4 overclocking. In this video, I found up to 13% improvement in certain games and a solid improvement in Cinebench 2024 as well. Most of the gains came from the memory overclock as I found in a previous video. It is also very nice to see that the 13600K is still very competitive when it comes to multi-thread performance, even beating the recently launched R7 9700X in the Cinebench 2024 multi-thread test. And compared to the just launched Arrow Lake, an overclocked 13600K is not too far off from the performance of the Core Ultra 5 245K in multi-threaded scenarios. As of today, the 13600K is also slightly faster in gaming than the Core Ultra 5 245K. It is also interesting how certain Raptor-like CPUs have gotten more efficient over time with BIOS updates, even when using stock BIOS settings. I've had the 13600K for over two years now, and it will go down as one of my favorite CPU releases of all time for its solid gaming and great multi-thread performance per dollar.